I went with anger at my heel through bogside of the bitter zeal, Jesus pity on a day of cold and drizzle and decay. A month had passed, yet there remained a murder smell that stung and stained on flats and alleys, over all it hung, on battered roof and wall, on wreck and rubbish scattered thick, on sun steps and pitted brick. And when I came where thirteen died, it shriveled up my heart. I sighed and looked about that brutal place of rage and terror and disgrace. Then my mice and lips grew dry. I had heard an answering sigh. There in a ghostly pool of blood, a crumpled phantom hugged the mud. Once there lived a hooligan, a pig came up and away he ran. Here lies one in blood and bones who lost his life for throwing stones. More voices rose. I turned and saw three corpses forming red and raw in dirt and stone. Each upturned face stared on seeing from its place. Behind this barrier blaters three. We scrambled back and made to flee. The guns cried stop and here lay we. Then from left and right they came. More mangled corpses bleeding, lame, holding their wounds. They chose their ground, ghost by ghost, without a sound. One stepped forward, soiled and white. A bomber, I, I travelled late. Four pounds of nail and gelignate about my person hit so well it seemed to vanish where I fell. When the bullet stopped my breath, the doctor sought the cause of death. He upped my shirt, undid my fly. Twice he moved my limbs awry and noticed nothing. By and by, a soldier with a sharper eye beheld the four elusive rockets stuffed in my coat and trouser pockets. Yes, they must be strict with us, even in death, so treacherous. He faded, and another said, We three met close when we were dead. Into an armoured car they piled us, where our mingled blood defiled us, certain if not dead before, to suffocate upon the floor. Careful bullets in the back stopped our terrorist attack, and so three dangerous lives were done, judged, condemned, and shamed in one. That spectre faded in his turn. A harsher stirred and spoke in scorn. The shame is theirs in word and deed, who prate of justice, practice greed, and act in ignorant fury. Them, officers and gentlemen, send to their courts of the Most High to tell us, did we really die? And does it take recourse to law to tell 10,000 what they saw? Law that lets them caught red-handed, halt the game and leave it stranded, summon up a sworn inquiry, dump their conscience in the diary, during which hiatus, should their legal basis vanish, good, that thing is rapidly arranged, where's the law that can't be changed? The news is out, the troops were kind. Oh, impartial justice has to find, we'd be alive and well today if we'd let them have their way. England, even as you lie, you give the facts that you deny. Spread your lie with all your power. All this left is turning sour. Friend and stranger, bride and brother, son and sister, father, mother, all not blinded by your smoke. Photographers that caught your, your stroke. The priests that blessed our bodies spoke and wagged our blood in the world's face. The truth will out to your disgrace. He flushed and faded. Pale and grim, a joking spectre followed him. Take a bunch of stunted shoots, a tangle of transplanted roots, ropes and rifles, feather nests, some dried colonial interests, a hard unnatural union grown in a bed of blood and bone, tongue of serpent, gut of hog, 
spaced with spleen of underdog, stirred in with oats of loyalty, sectarian supremacy, and heat to make a proper botch, a buoy on a bitter scotch. Last, the choice ingredient, you. Now, to crown your eyes, you boil it over, make a mess of most imperial success. He capered weakly, racked with pain, his dead hair plastered in the rain. The group was silent once again. It seemed the moment to explain that sympathetic politicians say our violent traditions, backward looks and bitterness keep us in this dire distress. We must forget and look ahead, nurse the living, not the dead. My words die out. A phantom said, here lies one who breathed his last, firmly reminded of the past. A trooper did it on one knee in tones of brute authority. That harsher spirit who before had flushed with anger spoke once more. Simple lessons cut most deep. This lesson in our hearts we keep. Persuasion, protest, arguments, the milder forms of violence air nothing but polite neglect. England, the way to your respect is via murderous force, it seems. You push us to your own extremes. You condescend to hear us speak only when we slap your cheek, and yet we lack that last technique. We rap for order with a gun, the issues simplify to one. Then your democracy insists you must not talk with terrorists. White and yellow, black and blue, learn their history from you. Divide and ruin, muddle through, not principled, but politic. In strength, perfidious, weak, a trick to make good men a trifle sick. We speak in wounds, behold this mess, a curse upon your politess. Another spirit, wet, dead lips that had not spoken yet. Well, my curse on the cunning and the bland. Gentlemen who loot the land, they do not care to understand and keep the natives on their paws with ready lash and rotten laws. Then, if the beasts erupt in rage, give them a slightly larger cage, and in scorn and fear combined, turn them against their own kind. The game runs out of room at last, the people raises from its past, the going gets unduly tough, and you have surely had enough. The time has come to yield your place with condescending show of grace. An empire builder handing on. We reap the ruin when you're gone. All your errors heaped behind you. Promises that do not bind you. Hopes in conflict, cramped commissions, fates exploited, and traditions. Bloody sputum filled his throat. He stopped and coughed to clear it out, then finished with his eyes aglow. You came, you saw, you conquered, so you gorged, and it was time to go. Good riddance. Wait, forget, released. But for the rubbish of your feast, the slops and scraps that fell to earth and sprang to arms in dragon birth, sashed and bowler had it long apprentices of fife and drum, high and dry abandoned car guards of dismal streets and empty yards, drilled at the code word true religion to strut and mutter like a pigeon not an inch up the queen that used the walls like a latrine for scribbled magic at their call from the nearest music hall Pope and devil intertwine. Two cardboard kings appear and join and one more battle by the boyne. Who could love them? God above. The thirteenth corpse beside him said, smiling in its bloody head. Though 
and others reason for alarm in dareness and a lack of charm. Their cursed plate cries out for patience. They, even they, with other nations, have a place if we can find it. Love our changeling, garden mind it. Doomed from birth, a cursed air, theirs is the hardest lot to bear. But not impossible, I swear, if England would just clear the air and brood at home in her disgrace, everything in its own place. Face their walls of dole and fear and be of reasonable cheer. Good men every day inherit father's fairness with the spirit. Pl pl purge the filth. And do not stir it. Let them in. At least let in a breath or two of oxygen. That they may settle down for good. And mix themselves in the common blood. We all are what we are. And that is mongrel pure. What nation's not? Where any stranger hung his hat and seized a lover where she sat. He ceased and faded. Zephyr blew and all the others faded too. I stood like a ghost. My fingers strayed along the fatal barricade. The gentle rainfall drifting down over Cullum Killer's town could not refresh, only distill in silent grief from hill to hill. <laughs>